back to the Smite Minor League. It's still week one. We get a first look at some of the season six action, and it's all about North America this afternoon. Joining me on the desk will be the lovely one and only Taco. Taco, how you doing? Feeling pretty good. Had a pretty exciting morning over there in Europe. Excited mm. to take a look to see what North America has to offer now. And we're going to start things off with Armada versus Sanguine, two teams that are definitely interesting. As an eye test for these two teams, Taco, which one are you favoring just by players on paper? I, I'm not really sure I even have to speak here, it's but it, it, it's this Baskin. There's, yeah. there's Baskin, Gino. There's a lot of star power, I think, happening over on the guys uh, for Armada there. But Sanguine's still got plenty of, of fight in them, too, they, I think. They really do. Armada, for you guys at home, it's going to be Baskin in the solo lane, Scream Jungle, Meerkat in the mid lane, and Gino and Snoopy in the dual lane. So a lot of names you've heard before. But across the way, you may not recognize some of these names, but they've been around the scene for a while, and they're all Latam players, which is going to be Sanguine, which is very interesting. Jakor, Panitom, Shinto, Ronigu and Netrioid. This team, well, they got themselves a spot in the league and I believe it's very well deserved. It was a very well-earned spot, I think, from the members of Sanguine. I, I think especially the big thing I want to highlight here is Shinto and Panitham. Shinto is a player that I think has really worked his way around the uh, competitive side of things because mm. a lot of people regard him as just somebody who is always willing to put the effort in. And I think that can bode very well when you have a, a jungler like Panitham who's traditionally fairly aggressive, but uh, the inconsistency is where I, I think a lot of struggles have come about for beneath them. But having somebody as consistent as Shinto to make the calls, I, I think, could really make this pairing very strong. Completely agree. And the one thing about this Latam team that's pretty much stuck together for the most part for a while now is that now they're going to get regular competition against some of these North American minor league players, which means some of the issues we've seen them do in the international stages won't be as prevalent as the season progresses because they would have learned a lot through the season. Oh, plus they just have that international experience. It's not like this is unfamiliar territory for them by any means. They've already been around the block a couple times before, so this is really just trying to put the puzzle pieces together. Across the way, though, Armada, definitely the talk of the town. Baskin and Scream both on this roster. Two players that have, well, been spoken about long and hard for the past year in terms of Scream's performance in the jungle last year was fantastic. Unable to play in the SPL due to schooling was the reason, I believe. And Baskin, well, he's gone back to solo for this, Taco. Baskin back to solo, is that where we would prefer him to be? Back in his natural environment, but if you're Baskin, pretty much every single role looks like it's natural for you. You reckon? I, you reckon I really do. He's, he's without a doubt probably one of the best mechanical pros we have for every single individual role that I can think of off the top of my head. Well, I wonder what he'll get in the solo lane today. Will it be Vermana? Will it be King Arthur? They're the two that we're seeing <laughs> a little bit more so. Let's get into picks and bands and find out exactly what's getting banned away this game. we got to look at Europe. And with Europe and SML, we did see a lot of, you know, the Freya, the Naja, the Fenrir to start things off. And as time went on, the King Arthur started slipping through already. Teams are still putting a lot of emphasis towards the duo side buff invades mm. for the start of the season. So seeing those early game pressure picks like the Naja supports doesn't really catch me off guard by any means. Uh, for Armada, that's actually probably one of the main reasons why they're looking to just go ahead, take that pick right off the board. But it leads me to believe that they're trying to find a, a different sort of pressure pick for their own team. I mean, there is also the talks of Merlin possibly being an option here. And we, I, I think that could be some interesting play. We'll see. King Arthur taken out for now from Armada, though, to join Naja. Jubalonke from Sanguine, something that's starting to rise to potency is Jubalonke, one of the better performing hunters of the season so far. And of course, the lovely, the classy Freya has been banned forever and will continue to be banned, it seems, for the foreseeable future. I wouldn't want to let Snoopy play Freya nice. either. You also run the risk of having just about anybody from Armada, I think, try to flex pick Freya. And the Fenrir selection choice early on here, not a guarantee, though, that this is going to go to Geno. No, not always. It could potentially go in the jungle for Scream or even to the solo lane as a stretch for Basket. In, but it depends what he's against. Bacchus, however, someone that has got through the banning stage a couple of times, but not prevalently picked up too much. This game, though, going for it, and against Defender, it could cause problems. Ever since his recent buff, I think that Bacchus has just been causing problems everywhere. It's just so tanky nowadays, yeah. and it's really tough to try and manage him in the laning phase with all that damage mitigation being provided off the passive from his chug, but 
Bakas, he provides a lot of interrupt, but he doesn't have any CC immunity available in his kit. I could definitely see some opportunities here for Armada, if this is Gino, for example, Ooh. on the Fender support uh, of just trying to specifically target out this Bacchus. We'll talk about specifically targeting out, and the Wheelix pickup <laughs> is exactly what that will do. Bacchus no longer can flop anywhere at any given win because a Wheelix may be there with a Gravity Surge. Sangman, however, will also pick up the Vermana, so that's a Vermana locking more than likely for Jakor in the solo lane. But we I've seen a bit of Vermont in the jungle too. A Vimana jungle is the early game warrior strategy, and that one is something that we've also uh, had its time in the sun plenty of past metas before. Mm. But I, I think the big thing about it is that he just has so much dive potential early on, and when you're able to escalate those first couple of kills into those buff invades or the early objective plays, uh, Vamana is just so ideal because he's such a problematic frontlining member to deal with. What's the game plan from Sanguin going into this then? Because they know they're against, you know, some of the bigger player names in minor league that everyone's going to recognize and say they're the, the best things in sliced bread, right? What should their game plan please stick to what they do best of like team fights or is it more try and beat them at the wrong game? I think team fighting has always been where Shinto, Netriod, and those guys have kind of flourished. It's yeah. just simply, their team fight is just unreal. Their synergy has been developed over years. These are all guys that have worked with each other time and time again. So it's kind of odd to see this Giannis pick up. There's a decent bit of mobility here for Sanguine now, mm. but I just feel a little bit awkward as far as their follow-up is concerned. You've got the Bacchus for the flop-in, but what's your, what's your burst, like, burst yeah. damage? Is it the Giannis with the unstable of Vortex, the Kurninos with the Bramble Blast. It, it just feels like one of the risks Sanguine is running right now is that their comp isn't going to really provide them that follow-up that you would want to bring down heavy burst characters like the Awilish, like the Vulcan, or even the Jingwei. And you mentioned the Vulcan towards the end there. It's an extra thing for the knock-ups for Awilix too. Nice little comp. On paper, Taco, how are you feeling? Who's winning this? Armada's looking pretty hot. Well, let's find out if Armada will stay hot after game one. To the casters we go for this set. Hey, 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 it's the casters. That's us. It's me and Agar on the cast. Doug, of course, on the ones and twos. First of all, how are you, buddy? This is our first call of the season. I suppose it is. Yeah, I'm doing pretty well. I'm still a little curious, though. What are the ones and twos? Uh, so that's actually a, that's a throwback. So the ones and twos are, it's a DJ term. The ones and twos are specifically a set of decks that you use when you're on the DJ. It originated in 90s hip hop. Bart used to say it with respects to our observer. And I carry it on Bart's legacy. Still don't think there's ones and twos there. I don't know. Anyway, Armada certainly trying to be number one here. Sanguine trying not to wind up being the number two. Godlike Snoopy up here with Gino on the Fenrir support. Now, the Fenrir support, a little bit of a hangover from uh, season five, but still very, very, very very strong. Good jukes there by Gino. Actually, it's Netroid that has to use the beads because the horrific emblem from Gino was going to cause a few too many problems, but stun's coming up and Netroid getting very, very low in this duo lane. This is what sh this is what should be happening in the duo. Two very aggressive lanes. Bach is just aggressive by nature because he has so much power and the ability to fight at level one, but this is what Fenrir is all about, is, is forcing beads and making carries uncomfortable early on. But check out the relic usage, or rather selection, by Ronagu here is it's actually purification beads which means that Gino and Snoopy get so much free pressure just because of that horrific emblem that Ronagu and Netriod really have to respect it. So the invade coming out here on the purple buff by the blue team. No need the last hit. Looks like it was confirmed by Kurnanos. And there's the follow-up damage. Can they have enough to take care of Bacchus? Long-range shots will not be enough. The purple was actually successfully invaded by Armada, so there you go. Successful invade. Tons of poke onto Ronnie. That's going to be a nice look here for Armada to start things off. This is exactly how you expect the duo lane to go with uh, with Jingwei Fenrir because Fen Jingwei doesn't feel like the best sort of pairing with Fenrir a lot of the time in the duo lane because of how aggressive Fenrir is and how passive Jingwei can be. But th I actually think they work really well together because not only is there the knock-up off the stun setup, but Jingwei is one of the best hunters at securing buffs. We just saw it at the purple buff, and that and that's where you're really going to get your lead is, is by securing buffs over your opposition. So... I like these two together, but at the same time, I think that not just in this duo lane, but but really everywhere, you really have to give a, a lot of respect to Sanguine. These two teams have been playing quite a bit in the in the Smite Prime weekly tournaments that go on, the 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 ones that are kind of for fun, but also for bragging rights and some gems, of course. And Sanguine's had some pretty good success against teams like Armada and, and other ones in the minor league and, and just pick up teams around the around North America. So. 
I'm sure everyone's looking at Baskin and Scream and Meerkat and Gino and Snoopy and going, oh, well, this is over, but Sanguine's a good squad. Exactly. I, I think this is, when you look at Armada, this could be a pro league team, right? I mean, the Baskin is arguably the best player in the world still, uh, despite what league he's in. But as you said, Sanguine has, has shown their stripes and names I think we will quickly become familiar with as the minor league season continues to go on. Baskin here playing the Guan Yu. Your can on the... Uh, the Vulcan. Something I did want to mention. We saw Guan Yu yesterday in the console world. Guan kind of coming out of nowhere here uh, as far as the, uh, the the pick ability is concerned. Well, it's a couple different things that have brought Guan Yu back to relevance. It's the heal buff now that he, when he has his passive stack, it's 1.7 times enhanced heal instead of the 1.5 it was before the patch. But it's also the fact that Blackthorn Hammer and Runeforge Hammer both got a lot better. Those are two great items. Mid lane, here's a hit coming out from Anchito and Sanguine are the first ones on the board. Meerkat with a big ol' ultimate. And Gino will follow up for the answer back. But it's Sanguine that make the decision. Big ultimate from the mid lane mage cuts it through. Good idea there by Sanguine. They want to capitalize on the fact that duo lane's only level four. Snoopy's out of position. That's a great ro rotation and ultimate by Shinto. But Meerkat hitting a three-man Vulcan ult is a really good way to turn a fight. <laughs> and what I was going to say when I was looking at this composition is that there, there's a lot of physical here for Armada. This is a four physical composition, so you really need to make sure that you're picking a mid lane mage that's going to do enough damage and, and make you respect him enough to build magical defense despite the four physical. And I think Vulcan's a perfect selection for that. Low cooldowns, high scaling. You need to respect his damage in the later stages, even if he's the only magical. Absolutely have to agree with that one. Ronnie on the way out. One more hit and can't find it. No. Metroid is the one that turns it around. Beautiful support from the carry. Gino playing aggressively but didn't have enough power at this point. Remember, Brutalize, you're only going to put one point in it in the early game because you're really going to rely on that Unchained, your first to jump ability damage to do the majority of it for you. And good job by Ronnie kind of dodging in and out of his own creeps. Snoopy here going to avoid some of the hits from the Giannis. Jumps right into Kernanos, but still has the ultimate, pulls the cord, finds his way out. No big deal. We'll reconvene with his support player in the Purple Cove. So it is a Blackthorn Hammer for Baskin. I was wondering if he was going to rush Runeforge. Runeforge on, on Guan Yu is a much more aggressive option. It's far less HP, but also far more power. You wouldn't get the CDR, but the reason Runeforge is so incredibly potent on Baskin, or on Guan Yu rather, hold that thought as Yarkor in some trouble. Now double ultimates coming up from Scream and Baskin, but Scream's Feather Step just not quite enough damage at this point, especially with a Talaria selection, much more focused on mana regen and rotation capability than early game power. Not enough to bring down Yarkor. But where I was going with that is that Runeforged, you get extra damage whenever someone is affected by CC. Well, every swing of Guan Yu's ultimate it applies a slow. And so as if it wasn't enough extra damage that you're getting from that, you, you end up 100 to 0 squishies with ease with Runeforged Hammer. So Basket, if he gets a lead, might decide to go for something aggressive like that and, and see what he can do in that lane. Also, the dash is going to provide a slow, and you are constantly dashing because of the way Guan Yu's kit works. So you want to get your cooldowns up. So Runeforged absolutely... Good choice. And here's a nice monkey ultimate. Basket is still alive for the moment. No ultimate, but it will be coming up soon. That gank not good enough. Watch out! Oh, through space and time nearly caught Baskin right there on the retreat. But two jungler ganks in the solo lane and no kills from either one. Just not quite enough damage from either end to actually end up securing the kill in the solo. So I love the Talaria boots in general. You've heard me talk about the the wing boots for a season now. I still like them. I think that your the loss of 20 power comparing them to uh, Warrior Tabby. The loss of 20 power is absolutely worth the additional movement speed and the MP5 that you get out of the winged boots most of the time. Specifically speaking, towards the Monkey Man, who you're looking for cooldown anyway. You want, fear no evil is what he brings. He can do damage, but you want fear no evil. Scream, on the other hand, you saw him kind of drop the kill with the uh, with the feather step there. Just not enough damage. Also, a wheelish has a way to get around the map with Suku, and her passive is incredibly based on every ounce of power. I don't know. 
I'm, uh, I kind of wish those were Warrior Tabby right now. I, I understand, but at the same time, I think it's twofold why Scream is going to Laria in this spot. Number one, it, it, Willix has very high mana costs. And if you're True. not going to be going Hydras, which it looks like will not be the call right away at least, it's kind of difficult to, to stay on the map long enough to, to make it worth your while. Yoke gives mana. It does, but it's it's flat mana. It's not mana regen like something like a Hydras would give you or a Transcendence would give you. Fair. And secondly, Oelix's base damage is so insane. It's through yeah, the roof that a lot of times, yes, the, that particular gank doesn't go well because he doesn't have enough power, but in in the mid game where Oelix is really going to be doing the majority of her heavy lifting, she's gonna she's overkilling you with Feather Step the majority of the time. So being able to get to more fights and get in position for those gravity surges is, is, is more important than getting your level six gank to go perfectly. You're also getting power, free power off of the ultimate as well. The ultimate is so much more than a pull. <laughs> so much more than a pull. It's sometimes forgotten. And then you get ulted and just poked to death by the old uh, Wheeler Spear. A little scary. It's pretty good. A lot of power, a lot of attack speed. So you, you, it is a, a really potent stim in general. 60 power, 70% attack speed at level 20. Yeah, it's not bad. You ever, uh, so an enhanced fire giant takes away half of the backdoor protections. Will's just going to walk up a lane and take care of your towers. Hit space power, hit four, and just mash the tower. Yes, no one else on the planet should have their ultimate math to their space bar. It makes <laughs> no sense at all. My keybinds are a little weird. A little. Yeah, that's the one. They're the worst keybinds I've ever seen in my life. Hey, I've heard a lot of people use some of my keybinds. I use uh, left click to auto attack. Yeah, I use that one, too. See? Everybody likes my keybinds. There you go. No one likes your UI, I can tell you that much. That's a work of art. Yeah. <laughs> Meerkat hitting level 10 here on the Vulcan. He's got the uh, the old ELO hat. You guys actually did a really funny spot about Celestial Legion help um, as Gino gets a little bit serious. That was cute, Cheeto. Um, but... In all seriousness, this is a very powerful item. It, it is, and he goes for the Dynasty Plate Helm. This is the cheaper option, you know, the Celestial Legion Helm getting some, some nerfs, not quite as potent. It also it also ends up being a little bit more cost efficient right now. This is a tier two item from your cat. And it, you don't need that much physical protection up against a character like Hunbats. Yeah. You really just want a little bit so you don't get 100 to zero or, or poked out significantly by Overhand smash, it lets you contest a little bit better towards gold furies, things like that, if the jungler is in your lane. It also just doesn't slow down his build too much. And like I said, he needs to really be worried about how much damage he's doing because he's the only magical damage dealer. I think a Dynasty Plate Helm is a, is a perfectly fine pickup here for Meerkat. I think that it, uh, if I'm him, I'm going straight into either Divine Ruin or uh, Spear of Desolation. You need sure. early pen and early damage. Just a matter of how, who is he going to be hitting? Am I am I hitting Yarkor? Then I'm building Divine Ruin so that his ultimate doesn't make him invincible to me. Am I hitting anybody but Yarkor? Then I'm going Spear of Desolation. And I think it's the latter. I think we'll see a Spear of Desolation. I think we'll be focused. I think Meerkat should be focusing on some of the other options. As uh, wow, Gino just eats up Shinto. A little bit of an overshot there for the mid lane, but can't complain about that. Uh, I don't think anybody expected Gino to just have that amount of damage coming out. Just boots so far. I guess there was a Genji's guard, but that was that was all scream, man. The 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 blink in knock up the gravity surge as well. It wasn't even used. Could have used it if he wanted to, but it wasn't important. Shinto used the beads mid air trying to prevent a pull, but it wasn't the CC that he needed to be worried yep. about. Another ultimate that'll get beads off of Rongyu. Baskin pushing Hunbats into the jungle so he can't take care of this team fight here. Ultimate is available for Hunbats, and if Baskin gets a little too excited, I think we might see it come out, but a nice rotation from Armada's jungler will prevent that from really going down. Splitting the two members of Sanguine up is very important here. Lots of knockups as well for Armada, another reason why this Vulcan works really well in conjunction with Screams and Willish. The, the, the Jingwei knockup and the Vulcan knockup both can set up for Gravity Surge pretty easily. And I love the way that Gino's played this so far. I mean, he is just running at Sanguine. And the, the true definite, when someone says, hey, what does smorking someone mean? <laughs> yeah. This is smorking. I mean, he's playing jungle too, almost. And that's what you want to do as 
whether you're playing Fenrir support, Naja support, even some of these Guardians, uh, you can make the argument for Bacchus, he's always half and half. Uh, when you're playing these aggressive, offensive support characters, you're not doing your job if you're not being aggressive, offensive in your support role. I do want to see Gino try and use Horrific Emblem a little bit more, just because you Same. know that Sanguine doesn't have a good Relic option to, to save their whole team. There's no Sprint, there's no counter Horrific Emblem, which can sometimes throw a wrench in your plans. So if I'm Gino, instead of going for the ultimate every time, just use Horrific and you'll force an ultimate or a Relic just by, by way of your Horrific. Horrific by itself is almost ultimate level power. Here's an aggression coming out from Sanguine, but it's Armada that might be able to turn it around. Meerkat is the first one to fall down. Feather Step, the portal's not big enough. Whoa! The portal goes the other way. Roddy with the juke boots of the century, but I think he will fall down. No way, no There's way. No he way. Oh, the med, the, the med, med from Yarkor was so good, but still not good enough. Gino able to clean it up, and that might have actually baited the rest of Sanguine into a bad spot. Uh, Gino's still in trouble, and Yarkor's just going to eat him. A two for one going in Sanguine's direction, and you gotta, hats off to wrong you. That was the slippery portal usage there was really cute. Nice I don't even comedy. know if it was intentional, to be I, honest with you. You but. know, I, I, I might have to take a second look at it, you know, later on, but I... I think it was. I think the Could've first been. I think the first portal he went through, he thought was the second one, and that was a mistake. And then he went, Well, then it's the other one. Here we go. He really did uh, just teleport himself to near safety. <laughs> Meerkat does a good a good job of getting his ultimate off, did as much damage as he could underneath uh, a, a heavy fire, but you it, it feels crazy to say you can't be that far up when you're right on, on your, your tower, tower line, but Realistically, against a composition that's this good at diving mages, you just can't be that far up and be safe at the same time. Yeah, I mean that—that's—that's that's one of the things you see at lower level play all the time. And not—not uh, not that I'm calling Armada lower level players, but you'll see it. You'll see it if you ever watch like gold level players. It'll be like you're just back up. Well, I'm on my tower as if that's the end of the map. You could go behind your tower, especially against a composition like you said. Hunbats is gonna jump on you. Vamata's gonna jump on you. Your tower is not a safe zone. Meerkat has no beads, wow, gets a crest on, and the combination, we're gonna talk about that. That is not your typical stun and gun setup. That was beautiful. That was sick. Shinto is just a really, really good mid laner. Uh, I, I really think that he flies under the radar as far as strong players in the mid lane and, and doesn't really get enough hype when talking about minor league mid laners. Yeah. This dude's an animal. That that was that was insane. So I mean even last year, Shinto, I've 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 heard the name. I've seen him play once or twice. What can you tell us about this guy? The dude just has enough competitive experience, I think. I mean, a lot of these players have been around the scene for a little bit. Just like but, right underneath that. Yeah, if I remember correctly, Shinto may have been a jungler before he switched over to the mid lane, but he, he just seems to really take to the role really well. It just has good game sense. Gold Fury started by Armada. Doing that against the Bacchus is dangerous, and so Armada will get on out of there. Full eject as well, and I respect that call. They're picking it up one more time. Maybe not so much. So 25%. Well, they know Hunbats has no ult and Giannis has no ult, but I don't know if they know how close those ults are to coming back up because both players have 30% 30 30%. CDR. Shinto, in his case, actually 40%. Here's the Hunbats ultimate basket against the wall. Knock up, not good enough. That's going to be a nice uh, disengage coming out from Armada. Watch out. Shot again by Shinto. He's he's on the mark. He is. His Giannis is definitely on point right now. But the problem is that these sorts of long engagements favor Armada very heavily. Baskin can just sit there, consistently give his team that conviction heal, and wait it out. And, and the thing is also that Armada only used one ultimate in comparison to Sanguine's three. Yep. So I like Snoopy pulling this again. Meerkat's ultimate is the best secure in, on the map right now. 40%, Sanguine seeping in, Detroit around oh, the back line, Armada oh, oh, oh. takes the Gold Fury, very dangerous spot, however, and Snoopy blows up the mid lane Giannis. Rongyu being aggressed on here, basket on the horse, stun, not good, but Rongyu still shredded, not killed just yet. The ultimate from the Hunter, where's the wraparound? Someone hit him, and it's Baskin that gets the last hit. Baskin still going aggressively as Panatom has to jump away. Yarkor going deal. in, though, because he has that Colossal Fury ready to go. Meerkat has some anti-heal on him now, and that'll be enough to force him back. 
But that was close for Armada. I thought that Gold Fury got reset yes. with that Vulcan Ultimate in the air. And I think it was reset temporarily, it but it got picked back up right before that ultimate landed and was just enough to secure the gold theory. That was an extremely heads-up play. I, I'm going to say Scream, and you guys can correct me. I think it was Scream that hit it, uh, but whichever player on Armada hits that, that's an extremely heads-up instinctual play that, like, these guys have played how many hours of competitive smite? That's where that nails you. Because that was a reset. Meerkat's ultimate's in the air. All of these variables have to come into your mind, and you have to just poke the gold fury to make sure that you have aggro on it so that it still gets hit and it's not invulnerable. That was just pure smite instincts, and that's that's going to be the difference. We watch these Smite Minor League teams, and you look at the level of talent on Armada, and you look at the level of talent across the way, not just Sanguine, but the rest of the league. I think we might be surprised at how competitive things might be even against this level of talent, but those little changes, those little moments are what are what separates players like, like Scream and Meerkat from, I think, the rest of the pack. Well, Sanguine's still holding their own for now, though. I mean, right there in the gold department, Five to five and kills. XP looks like it's actually in their favor for the Tie most game. part, except for where Gino is. So 1,500 experience actually in, in favor for Sanguine. But all these fights have centered around Basket now. As yeah. soon as Basket rotates into these fights, we're seeing a lot more of Armada playing aggressively, and I really like that. And, and there's no there's no fear in Armada. They're the ones saying, okay, Sanguine, what are you going to do about this? What about the Gold Fury? What about the Pyromancer? Pyromancer goes down, another ultimate used by Meerkat in order to secure, so Sanguine might take this opportunity to try and take a fight. They'll look for it. They'll certainly look for it, but it looks like Armada want the reset. Gino didn't get the memo. Here comes Baskin and a little bit of help from the Monkey. But who's on top? It looks like Sanguine are actually on the bad side of this team fight. Yarkor just trying to bark down the mage, but the entirety of Armada surrounding the big Vamana. Such good peel. And look at Snoopy on the back line trying to take down Shinto all by himself, but he'll get him one on one. Now Rangyu in a bad spot as Netrioid falls to the hand of Gino. Snoopy is still taking 20 points of damage oh. this entire fight. You can't let an ADC free cast like that in the back line and expect to win the fight. And, and how disheartening. Rongyu sitting there as the fire giant is started by Armada. And that's one of the ultimate. Neither will Hardcore, but they're absolutely here for at least a conversation. Two shots will kill him. Make that three as Scream looks for the third. Should have it here. Scream, yeah, there that comes the cooldown. But Yarkor is making things messy in the Fire Giant pit. Has the knock up on the Meerkat. Fire Giant getting lower. And Armada still on top of the objective. Gino getting low. Armada somehow secures it and manages to mop up Yarkor at the same time. The sheer audacity of that. That, that right there is Armada just being confident in their ability above their opposition. And that is how you have to play Smite. You've got to go into these engagements going, I'm going to hit 100% of my abilities. You've got to go into these engagements saying, I'm going to kill the fire giant. That's exactly what Armada do. They don't give a damn if they're at 10% HP with all these lava pools around. They're here to do it. And 20 minutes in, it's 10 to 5. Armada with a slight lead of 6,000 gold, plus a fire giant barking down the right side, Phoenix. And where did that Whoa. Bacchus go? Nice play, though, by Shinto. And almost knocked down Snoopy all by himself, trying to get some revenge. But Netrio had picked up and put down Meerkat, able to confirm that one. Snoopy, not quite the snooping of the Unstable Vortex, but close enough. Still manages to dodge it. Shinto and Panatom still on the run as Armada continues their right side Phoenix Siege. 50% on the burn so far. Harkor here to play defense. Scream off to the jungle. Cheeto shows up one more time, trying to find Bastion. The damage is good against him, but it's just not enough. The Phoenix does fall down. P.S. Shinto taken care of by it, not Gino. 5-2-7 and seven for the Fenrir support. And what a wonderful play that was. I love wow. where... I love where the, the Fenrir support is going, too. So he builds Tank Boots and Genji's Guard and then hits a pivotal point in the game where he, most of the time here, you buy another support item, whether it's Sovereignty or, or Heartward, depending on what you're dealing with, right? But where you have, I always say, don't let your lead play you. But at the same time, you got to play your lead, man. You're ahead a zillion points, yes. Buy a Void Shield, yep. leverage your lead, leverage your character choice, and become truly Jungle 2. He's providing a ton of damage for the squad, 
and absolutely doing the job. He really, I mean, he's played this really well. As I said, it's it. You're smorking your opposition, and yeah. Gino's played this so aggressively it almost borders on disrespect. <laughs> it, it would really annoy me to go up against the way that Gino's played this game. Like, how how does he get away with this? But yeah. it's just good understanding of of the damage that he can take and do simultaneously. And Armada did that last siege over the course of seven minutes. Yep. I mean, it was long. They all had 3K gold plus whenever they went back to base, and that's the power of the sustain of Guan Yu being able to stay in that fight for what felt like an absolute eternity. They get, what, gold, they got Gold Fury when they came back, but it was Pyromancer, mid-tier one potentially, Fire Giant, all of the towers, and Phoenix on the right-hand side. So it's all in one. 14 kills for Armada. The scream puts a dot on the Bacchus. Gino to the right side, a jump and a bite puts Shinto down to 50%. Full Brutalize puts him one hit away from death. Baskin is getting Banatom. He was one hit from death. Now Netriot has to use both relics to try and stay up. His left side Phoenix has already fallen. The chase is on though from Sangwa. They're looking for Snoopy who doesn't have his relics, but just a little bit too quick. Got some heals also, Baskin. Dealing damage and healing his teammates. That's what I said, by the way, when, when uh, Bacchus died five, seven minutes ago. I said, how disheartening. It wasn't the death. Bacchus intelligently uses Intoxicate right before he falls. And not only is the damage healed up by Guan Yu in one heal, more so. Yes, the Bacchus ultimate out healed by one Guan heal. It's just not, not a fun feeling. In the, in the way that Sanguine has gone about this, it, it, the anti-heal came on too late for Shinto. I mean, by the time that Divine Ruin was done, Armada had already gotten fire in the right side Phoenix. So that it's just, you're, you're already past the point of what feels like no return. But it's also that there, this isn't a good draft to apply anti-heal. Hunbats is pretty good at it, but he doesn't have a Brawler Speed Stick. It looks like he'll be getting it right now, but it's still too little too late. Shinto is playing Giannis, a character that I think applies anti-heal worse than almost anybody. Just I think it's inconsistent terrible. damage. You need it to be real burst. Anti-heal is good burst, but it's still not what you're really looking for. If that were an Obsidian Shard, he'd be doing much, much more damage, but they feel like they need the Divine Ruin. And their Pestilence just now coming up for Bacchus. Yes, the Belch of the Gods has anti-heal built in, but it's still not always easy to land. It just feels like the Sanguine Draft wasn't prepared to play around the Guan sustain. Yeah. And that's really what's happened. Also, the way that ba Baskin and Scream have played together has been nearly unstoppable, and that should be no surprise. Teammates, the back half of last year, even with the roll swap for Baskin. It's things like that right side Phoenix where, where Scream just sits there and waits for Baskin to go in and ult on Ronagu. Ron has to make a choice. Do I get stunned or do I jump in and get gravity search? <laughs> I'm dead either way. Yeah. It, you, you just put him in a, an impossible position. So Scream naturally in a wheelish player. The fire giant brought down to 50%. Hardcore just, wh wh what, where are you? Where is your life pool? There's no Vimana ult whatsoever. Baskin does wind up falling because he's 1v4ing the squad. Meerkat's ult will, will whiff. Fire Giant still alive. Armada with a 15,000 gold lead. Now Baskin's down for 40 plus, so it won't be easy to stick around and just wait for him because by that point, Yarkor will also have respawned. But this is the right call. Just push the right side, Phoenix. It's already weak and you still have a fire wave. 4v4 here on the right hand side. Gino Hello. trying to find it. And Shito just gets on fantastic. He's on fire. Great job there taking care of the hunter. Snoopy can't maintain it. Was Snoopy's dash down? Because so, he got flopped, happened. but Jingwei can still dash during I mean, that point. Listen, he can't dash. I can't speak. Something's in the air right now. And Armada have to walk away. Yeah, I don't like that call. I was going to say, if they were, the conversation was clearly about Fire Giant. Not enough tools. Enhanced Fire Giant now, by the way, which will take away some of the backdoor protections that Sanguine's Phoenixes have on them at the moment. So Sanguine with some signs of life. They kill Baskin and Snoopy, but a bit of an overextension by Baskin and a bit of an int by, by Snoopy overall, especially when you factor in the fact that his beads were up, means that Armada has to let off the gas for at least a little bit, but still looking quite solidified in their position in this game. Look at how much damage Geno's done. He's just below Meerkat, and that ranks him above both carries of Sanguine. 
so far this game. Netroid has not been able to make an impact whatsoever. And when you're going to pick a Kernanos pretty early on for your side, it's got to do better than one and three and third in the player damage charts. That's just not enough. Kernanos kind of the flavor of the month hunter, I feel like. He uses Rune Forge well. No Rune Forge in the build, however. But Kernanos seems to be very, very popular. He's a good gun. He's good. That's it. Just good. He doesn't strike me as obscenely great. You know, he doesn't have this King Arthur style presence. A wheelish is going to be very popular in this meta, I think, because of the popularity of Bacchus. Wow. Only one magical defense item for both Ronigu and Yarkor, so Meerkat really gets to eat in these team fights at this point. He's nearly full build. Looks like it'll be a Spear of Desolation. I, I, he's got plenty of pen already, mm -hmm. but Spear of Desolation is such a big boost to your damage against Squishies anyways that it doesn't concern me too much that he's going for, for really four pen items because Dynasty Plate Helm is also a, a pseudo pen item. Once he sells that Dynasty Plate Helm, he just needs more outright power, I think, in this build. A, a, a Rod up to Hootie would, would fit very well. Even a Kronos Pendant, lower the cooldowns, get more uses. 40% on the Fire Giant, saying which is here. Crits on Ronnie. He's half HP after the knockup. There's the Fear No Evil to the left-hand side, and it will force out the ejection from the Fire Giant. Baskin on the run! Meerkat with the shotgun taking down the Jungle Monkey. And Hardcore going to suffer the same fate. Scream with the last hit. 18 for Armada. And Gino wasn't even there for this upgraded Cursed Ankh. If you thought Yarkor fell quickly in that situation, wait until you see when that upgraded Ankh applies and he takes more damage from the entire the enemy team. A, a mere Shogun's Kasari is not enough to withstand a, a, a five and a half item Vulcan at yep. level 20. You, you just can't do it. And, and this whole composition is really built around the trust that Meerkat is going to be able to put out damage when it's necessary to punish the, the composition that, or the, the build that Sanguine is going to go for against the style of composition. And Meerkat has certainly delivered on that thus far. He's third on his team in player damage, two, two, and seven. But it, it's really just, you hit a meatball late game, you're pretty good. You're in a good spot against, yep. against such little magical defense. And Yarkor, even after that, doesn't change it up. He goes for a higher than the mean lion, to just going further into the all physical defense. Right side Phoenix aggressed on one more time by Armada. Scream gonna make sure to take it down here. Retreat from Sanguine. Oh, okay. I didn't expect Gino to go all that in. If he finds a stun, maybe you see some follow up, but no ultimate available for him, so not sure what he was looking for there. Gino is basically unkillable at this point. He's got a Lono's mask, and even though it's not quite as potent as it was in season five. He's still level 20. It still does the thing. He's still dummy tanky right now. So he's able to jump in basically wherever he wants. I actually don't love the Lonos in this spot for Gino because he was so far ahead. I think it's a better sixth item in this spot Agreed. because five items in, I think he could have still been leveraging the damage that he would be doing. And Lonos really neuters that part of your aggressive support pretty, pretty heavily. What would you look for? Because the Void Shield is obviously, I think, the first thought process there. As a sure. hybrid damage item? I think, uh, I don't think I would have gone hybrid damage in the fifth item slot. Just raw? I, no, I would have gone defense. Uh, okay. And just rely on my base damage. The, the problem with going Lono is that it neuters your base damage overall, not that it doesn't give you extra damage. So I think that I would have gone for maybe a spirit robe. Also lacking some HP overall could have gone for something, even um, even a, a Blackthorn Hammer or something along Black those Thorn lines. Blackthorn Hammer, I think I would have, I would have loved a Blackthorn Hammer. Just something that gives him some HP. Yeah. I, I don't really need the damage, but Midgardian Mail would have been fine. I, I think that's where the way I would have gone. But now he's picked up a Toxic Blade in the sixth item slot. This feels like a little bit of overkill to me. I just don't think Gino knows what he wants, and I can't blame him. What does he need? He doesn't really need anything else in the build. Honestly, a Relic Dagger would have probably been a better pickup. They have so much anti-heal already, and, and clearly that isn't a problem up against the Arcor right now that I really don't think you need this other anti-heal option. Though it is just a pretty good stat stick. So I'm it's not you. like it's not like he's totally yeah, lost. Yeah, 15 pen is always nice. Relic Dagger would have been my choice for the record. Right side bird already down. Mid side Phoenix gonna be taken. Left side Phoenix at 50%. Scream making use of that ultimate. That's what yep. we we're talking about once upon a time. Just the, the sheer absurd numbers that you get from Gravity Surge. You don't need to pull. Although, is worth noting, 
Marcus now is able to initiate. When, uh, when, uh, when that gravity surge is up and a wheelish is there, you're just not allowed to jump in. Because not only will you get to take it away, you'll be pulled down into your near death. So, we're certain here in this game. Ultimate coming out from Gino. Beats down. There's a little defensive fear, no evil. Ooh. But it doesn't really hit anybody on Armada. And then the answer back is kind of nice from Sangman pushing players out. But they've got no birds left. Baskin going to try and force a relic here for Shinto, but instead Shinto decides to drop the portal at his own feet. Mid Phoenix isn't going to be up for a long time. Right side Phoenix still has some time as well, but no rush for Armada. They've got healing from Baskin. The fact that Meerkat was a quarter HP is really not a factor for much longer. 21k healing plus. Imagine Yarkor's damage numbers said zero, because that is how much damage Baskin has mitigated just by way of healing. I always look at it, the average player has, what, 2,000 HP in it. He saved 10 lives approximately here at, uh, at this moment in time. Kind of absurd when you think about it, considering Sanguine only have seven kills. <laughs> so he's definitely done his fair share of healing here. Armada looking to close this one out with a 20,000 gold lead. They're just waiting for Geno's ultimate to come back up. They know Natrio doesn't have beads, so it's going to be a wait for wait for Geno to have that ultimate. Look at how aggressively he's positioning, just waiting for Natrio to st step up. A stun into a Ragnarok is uh, is a win at this point for Armada. I don't think Sanguine can defend against three different fire waves down a 4v5. Well, Phoenix respawning here on the right side. Hernanos going to be shifting over to mid, and well, that's it. No real defense from Sanguine. Coming out here for the bird. 33 and a half on the clock. This game is all but Armadas. They still have to take down the Titan. And for what it's worth, everybody's six slotted. So the absurd gold lead is really not much to talk about. What is worth talking about are the three Phoenixes that are down. There's certain enhanced fire giant that's on the way. Although Hardcore is in the building, Shinto a little bit too early. I like the play. Snoopy, uh... Makes, makes himself look real skinny right right as that ultimate goes right in between him and the fire giant. <laughs> Nearly clipped him. Wouldn't have done enough to one-shot him, I don't think. But. If he's if he's a different hunter, does it hit him? Is he with a small I mean, if he's, play, if he's playing Jorbengunder, it hits him for sure. <laughs> I mean, he, he gets hit dead in the mouth at that yeah. point. A bigger hitbox if he's playing his fabled Kepri ADC. Yeah, Kepri maybe, ADC. Uh, that's that a thing. Been. What do you mean? Snoopy's played Kepri ADC before. We like it. It was really good. It's great. What else do you like about Kepri ADC? Give me three things you like about Kepri ADC. I like Kepri. That's one. What is next? I like ADC. That's a little loose, but I'll, I'll let it slide, I guess. I like Snoopy. There you go. There you have it. That's right. Oh, man. You good? Aggro, ladies and gentlemen. What's up? Just <laughs> So for Sanguine to find their way out of this, they're doing exactly what they need to do. Not that they have another choice. Uh, do your homework and kill the minions. Um, what is, is this a Pokemon battle? It kind of looks like it. I think they're waiting for Snoopy to die to the red buff so that Meerkat can take it. I, I, think I don't even the, know what was happening. There. I think that was the real plan. I really? Think that Snoopy said, I will die to this red buff before I give it to you. And they said, okay. I believe that. I believe that pretty heavily. Yeah, yeah me too. I think that was a pretty solid uh, <laughs> possibility of that happening. So Sanguine's job right now is to defend the Phoenixes from the fire minions, which they've done. The enemy has the fire giant. Ryan, do you defend your Phoenixes here with what little HP they have because they are going to get three shot? Or do you fall back on the Titan? Because that's scary as well, because it's the actual win cost. I think you hope that they go left to mid in between the, the Phoenixes, and you try and drop shift the Machito. I think that's your best option. Oh. Armada take wow. care of the left side. Not going to have a drop ship available as Shinto gets the ultimate chase down. Gino will be chased out. And it's a five on four. Sanguine now with the power play, looking to make moves. The screen here does have the bubbles, so a jump won't be too disruptive. Chito on the right side as well. Screams hunting for that Giannis now that he knows his beads are down, even with losing Gino for him playing a little bit too aggressively. Didn't get a lot of help from Armada either. 
must have just been a miscommunication on uh, on which objectives they were going for. Still trying to close this one out here. Boots already gone for Scream. He's now opted for the Blood Forge thanks to the Elixir of Speed. A new item here in Season 6. For 1,500 gold, you can buy 18% movement speed. That gets applied to your character permanently. And uh, that allows you to replace your boots, which provide 18% movement speed. Usually with Talara, it's a little bit different, but just it replaces boots and allows you to buy a sixth item. So that sixth item for Scream will be Blood Forge, high power. It's exactly what his character wants to do, plus a nice little shield. Assassins love it. Another replacement for Gino as well. Going with the massive Moon A. Love that choice. Yep, I think that's really good. Gives him a little bit more movement speed, a good amount of power, though that doesn't matter too much when you have Lonos, and the ability to get a lot of protections when diving in against the entire enemy team, just theoretically, like he might do eventually. Not that we saw that on the left side, Phoenix. Um, Odysseus Bow for Snoopy in replacement for the boots. Very surprised that Meerkat still has Dynasty played home at this point. He's yeah. probably waiting to try and sell boots for Rod of Tahuti plus Elixir of Speed, but I don't think he needs all that. Just pick, just to sell the Dynasty Plate Helm and get the the Rod, uh, I think, is the call at this point. Oh, he sells it, He sells boots for Doom Orb, which I actually really like. I, I think love the, the Tier 3 Doom Orb is very strong, especially in Siege situations because you're always around minions that are dying, so you always have that absurd amount of power. I just don't think that you really need Dynasty Plate Helm this late in the game. It's a Tier 2 item, as you said. It's a, it's a, bridge, it's a bridge item. Um... Players frequently, players frequently will sell uh, their Aussie once upon a time when we used to see the Light Blade, they would sell those stuff. So uh, a lot of different approaches here to the Tier 2 items. Why you picking up an item that we don't see all that often? A Shifter Shield. It's funny, Shifter Shield and Blackthorn, kind of like cousins. Shifter Shield going to give you 70 power when you're healthy. When you're not, that power gets cut down to 35, but... You get a whole bunch of prots as well. So a nice little hybrid item here for Baskin, but we we almost never see this item. Yeah, I, I don't know how much I love it in this spot. I think Runeforge probably would have been better for him because, as I mentioned earlier, the interaction with your ultimate, you do a million. I think maybe even something like a... almost a, almost a Shield of Regrowth. Or, um, Shield of Regrowth on Guan Yu is probably one of the few times that I actually really like that. I think could have given him some more mobility. I just don't know that raw damage stats are going to be what actually makes a difference for him here. And he already has so many prots between a fully stacked Gauntlet of Thebes, a Mantle of Discord. He's got a good amount of HP as well. I mean, he, he's really tanky right now, but yep. I don't know. I, the Rune for the, the Shifter is probably fine. The Fear No Evil on the back line. Meerkat launches one, hits wow. two players. Arcor has to just run away. Basket looking for him, can't find a stun. Finds the basic and shifter shields the opponent down. 4v4 as Hardcore picks up one, but Armada undeterred goes into the Titan. And it looks like they're going to take the Titan. Although a little bit of a fight here from Sanguin. 10%, 5%. Can Sanguin do anything about it? They get one, but it's not enough. Ooh. 20 to 10. And Armada take game one. Got a little bit spooky towards the end there, but it just took a little bit uh, of extra time for Armada to close out that game. A couple, two extra fire giants they had to wait for, but they really had that game under wraps for quite some time. And I really think it was around Screams of Willish and, uh, and Baskin's Guan Yu that really made the difference. The, the Willish just made it impossible for Running Yu to do a whole lot. Screams been playing a lot of that god recently. And then Baskin on the Guan Yu, I mean, I talked about it a million different times. The sustain was just a little bit too much for Sanguine to handle. Armada, a force to be reckoned with. Game one, already down. Yeah, thanks so much, after an aggro. Interesting game one between the two, Armada Sanguine. Uh, going into it, everyone expected Armada to win. It was convincing. It took a little longer than expected. Was it too much respect from Taco? Like, they took a long time to close that game. Out. I think they definitely could have played a little bit more confidently, a little bit further up. There were plenty of opportunities, I think, for them to look to close this game out. But yeah. better safe than sorry if they didn't feel confident enough to go ahead and close out the game earlier on around, like, that 20-ish minute mark, then it's understandable. Sometimes you just don't want to take the chances. And I can't blame them. Sanguine's definitely a team that could 
turn around a situation pretty fast. Now, the one thing we didn't know is there is obviously Agra the Tawazi on the broadcast. We're talking a lot about the Guan Yu and, of course, a Wheelix for Scream in the Jungle. But to be fair to him, Gino on the Fenrir made a lot of important plays in that and caused a lot of problems for the Armada squad. I think that this Bacchus pick was just an absolute backfire for Sanguine in a way. Really? Wrong Yu half the time was just baiting himself into bad situations because he would look for the initiation, but there was just nothing that he could find. And I, I think that Gino constantly using the Unchained as well for the jump stuns yeah. and just to apply pressure in general. He was just harassing the back line so consistently and leaving, I mean, that play right there, that, that says enough. Your support mm -hmm. wasn't really a support this game. He felt like a second jungler in a way. And Gino did a lot of work to make it all happen for him. As you said, though, I mean, with a backers for Rongyu there, ended up going beads to try and prevent some of the CC chains he was going to end up getting involved in as the game continued. But the problem was is that, well, it didn't really work out for him at all. At the same time, you can't really peel for your teammates if they're getting dove by a Fenrir with a Bacchus. It was just rough all around, I think. I mean, Armada had so much consistent crowd control set up for Scream. It was kind of just Scream picking whenever he wanted to try and go in to kill somebody. You've got Persistent Gust from Snoopy for a knockup. Meerkat's got the meatball as well for a knockup. And Scream can even look for it himself for, for self-setup, but... Throwing you, going for the beads, by the time you're level 12 on Bacchus, normally you're right around that mid-game period. So I, I think I would have personally preferred to see him opt for something like a Blink, even though Blink is a little bit more aggressive. And even though I, I think that Sengwen were definitely getting the worst end of a lot of these team fight trades, a Blink Intoxicate might have been a significantly better initiation than for him to attempt to flop in and, and guess whether or not Scream was going to decide to pull him.